Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody, and thanks for joining me. We're going to be talking about a super healing summer today. And since it's almost summertime, I think it's coming up in a few days, and it's June, um, all kinds of things can happen in summertime that otherwise might seem impossible. So let me explain to you a few things that happen in the summertime that, help, that can help you be healthier, heal from all manner of diseases, and support good health. Now, did you know that in the summertime, there is a reduced chance of heart attacks? And researchers studied 11,000 people who had heart attacks in the UK over a period of nine years. And the survival rate increases by 19% if the attack occurs in the summertime. This indicates that you are less likely to die of a heart attack in the summer than in the winter. But the higher levels of vitamin D that you get in the summer um, from the sunshine, which is synthesized by sunlight, are also thought to play a very protective part of those who suffer from heart attacks. Vitamin D is a steroid hormone that influences virtually every cell in your body and is easily one of nature's most potent cancer fighters. The sun is your source of vitamin D because you expose your skin to sunshine in small amounts and your skin synthesizes vitamin D sulfate. This form of vitamin D is water soluble and can travel freely in your bloodstream. Unlike oral vitamin D supplements, your organs can convert the vitamin D in your bloodstream into calcitrol, which is the hormone, hormonal or activated version of vitamin D. Your organs then use it to repair the damage, including damage from cancer cells and tumors. And vitamin D's protective effects against cancer work in multiple ways, including it helps to destroy mutate cells before they become cancerous and can reproduce um, and reduce the reproduction of cancer cells. It can also help promote the growth of new blood vessels from pre-existing ones, which is an important in the transition of dormant tumors turning cancerous. Now, researchers say that 10 to 15 minutes of direct sunlight exposure in the early morning or late afternoon can be plenty. But there is also research that shows the for further north you live, the more prevalent the rate of cancer is. This equates to the lack of sun exposure and not getting proper amounts of vitamin D. Now, when I was a little girl, we spent a lot of time in the summertime at my grandma's house, which was on an island in Nova Scotia. I was a tiny little island, and we went up there a lot. And I can remember my grandma talking to my mom about how all of the women on the island would get cancer, and the men just wouldn't get it. And it baffled her. And we always wondered why that was, because it was pretty prevalent um, on that island. And um, years later... I was talking to my mom about the sun and vitamin D and how people further north wouldn't always get out in the sun. And a light bulb went off in my head and she said, well, maybe that's why the men didn't get cancer on the island and the women did. The men were all fishermen and they all had that sun exposure on their hands and faces. And they had that kind of ruddy ex uh, complexion from sun exposure on the ships because of the sea salt and the water. Um, and they were out on ships even in the winter. So they always got their vitamin D stores in their body um, highly elevated because of just the nature of their job. And vitamin D stores in the body for about three months. And even if you get a little bit on your face or your hands and your arms, you're still getting vitamin D. And um, I do remember the women didn't go out much because it was cold and freezing and the winds were horrible and they were on this little island. And, and I, I remember... And this is something that happens in California. There's something called, uh, here, there's something called June gloom, which we have right now in the mornings. And it's a marine layer of fog that happens and then it burns off in a few hours. Well, in Nova Scotia, that would take till 12 or 1 o'clock to burn that marine layer off. So you just didn't want to go outside because it was just gloomy. You couldn't even see your neighbor's house. But anyway, but the men always went out because they always went fishing. Um, and so... It's interesting to me, um, all the correlations between that. So one of the things that also happens in the summertime, and I, I remember talking to my sister about this, she would get psoriasis, but it would always get better in the summertime. And controlled exposure to the sun could have very th therapeutic effects on skin, such as acne, because it would clear up any kind of, when I was a teenager, it would always clear that up for me, being out in the sun. 
but it also can help with psoriasis and dermatitis. And Dr. Ian White, the consultant dermatologist at St. John Thomas's Hospital in London, said, many skin disorders are caused by an oversensitive immune system. UV rays reduce that sensitivity, and it's better to walk around in the daylight rather than sitting directly exposed to the sun for length or any length of time, because then sunburn can occur, and then you've got other kinds of problems. So, I mean, you don't need tons of it, um, but a few minutes a day is very important to help build up the vitamin D in your body. The therapeutic effects of sun occur just below the level of the skin turning red or pink. Most fair skin people can tolerate up to 15 minutes of direct exposure before the skin turns pink. So, you know, my sister always saw her psoriasis get better and um, she didn't get a lot of sun. Uh, she lived up in Chicago and vitamin D was scarce for her. But a lot of those skin conditions are due to the liver being stressed and it needs vitamin D as well as it needs vitamin D and it needs a healthy, beneficial gut flora to really help your skin stay clear and free from some of these um, skin conditions that so many people get. Uh, so many people who have learned to make and eat cultured foods have seen a lot of these problems eliminated as the probiotics help detox the body, take the stress off the liver, cleanse the lymph system, and restore the gut flora. And combine that with 10 or 15 minutes of sunshine, and you have a very winning combo. So there are so many fresh fruits and vegetables we eat in the summertime. And I'm kind of a seasonal eater, so I get really excited. We're in strawberry and blueberry season right now, and now I cannot wait for those sun-ripened tomatoes. And we're getting a lot of lettuces and a lot of healthy vegetables, um, lots of different fruits. And when you combine those, those are actually prebiotic foods, those fruits and vegetables. They feed your gut flora and combine that with probiotic foods, and it has a huge impact on your body. Um, blueberries and strawberries, which are an abundance right now. I love the big fat blueberries we're getting right now. And uh, there was research in a nurse's health study done by Brigham and Women's Hospital and Harvard Medical School and Harvard School of Public Health. And this research was done with 70-year-old women who found to have reduced cognitive loss when they consumed one to two strawberries, uh, servings of strawberries or blueberry per week. Now, strawberries are also the fifth best source of vitamin C. They help to regulate your blood sugar. They help um, to give you polyphenols that keep your heart healthy. And so many of my afternoons are filled with berries. They give me a lift. They taste delicious. Um, blueberries, I will throw in sliced almonds, slivered almonds and blueberries. That's one of my favorite snacks. And I learned a long time ago that it's a good idea to keep them on my diet on a regular basis. They helped me a lot when I was a younger woman um, and I would get urinary tract infections. This was before I found cultured foods and I would frequently have bouts with UTIs, but blueberries help me keep them at bay. So, and according to a 1998 study done in the New England Journal of Medicine, blueberries have a compound called proanthocyanins that pre prevent bacteria from sticking to the walls of the urinary tract. And I have found that cultured foods um, once I added those to my diet, I never had a problem with UTIs. But my blueberry habit stuck with me, and it's just one of my favorite snacks. Now, apples uh, also give me a pickup. I, I love apples. I, they help keep acromantia in your body, which is the bacteria in your gut that protects your, your gut lining. It helps to keep that intact. And if I ever have a mid-afternoon slump, um, when I'm, I feel tired or something, often that is your blood sugar dropping and your adrenals crashing and you need a little help to keep those glucose numbers stable. And properties found in apples can help clear more sugar from our bloodstream. Apples help to activate the muscle cell insulin receptors, keeping your blood sugar levels in better balance. Muscle cells are glucose hogs, and they continuously need that uptake of sugar from the bloodstream in order to function and keep you moving throughout the day. Kombucha is another drink that really helps me in the afternoon, or kefir soda also does the same thing. They have some different bacteria in them, but they have the same good yeast, which is Espalardii. And kombucha really helps um, to help cool the body. And along with kefir soda does this too. It helps the liver. It assists the liver in detoxification. And often your liver gets very stressed when you get hot and warm. And kombucha is great for assisting the liver and keeping you cool 
Um, it's a great thing to have in the summertime, especially if you're out and out, you know, outdoors a lot and it will, your adrenals will get crashed from, you know, just being tired and, and being active and exercising. Kombucha is great. It is the best pick me up. I can't tell you how many times I've, I've felt tired. I've, we've either been out, uh, hiking or we've been swimming or we've been doing, going to the beach or something and I'll just feel tired about three o'clock and if I they have kombucha bars um, all over the place and we'll go get one or a kefir soda and it will pick me up instantly um, and it really does help make a difference and especially in the summertime um, another thing that is wonderful is watermelon watermelon is just a wonderful fruit it's mostly made with water it's refreshing and it's especially in the summertime and it has lots of vitamins and minerals and has lycopene and it has, tomatoes have that too, but it has more than even tomatoes have. Now, lycopene is a powerful antioxidant that gives fruits and colors that pink or red color. Most people think that tomatoes are the king of lycopene. And it has a lot. They have a lot. But actually, watermelon is actually a more concentrated source of it. It's one of my favorite foods to combine with kefir. It makes the most delicious kefir, kefir um, when you just take... Uh, watermelon and throw it in, in a, with a cup of kefir and a cup of uh, watermelon. Sometimes I put more than that, but it gets really bubbly and delicious. It also does that with cantaloupe too. And it helps with hydration in hot weather. And since our bodies are mostly water, we need lots of water to keep our lymph system and our liver clean, cleansing us. And watermelon is fantastic for this. Um, it is an anti-inflammatory fruit. It can cool down inflammation in the body that keeps you inflamed. It contains fiber, which encourages healthy digestion. And um, it also can keep you regular, too. It doesn't seem to mess with your blood sugar um, like other fruits because it's mostly made of water. Um, but rather, it keeps you in balance. And so watermelon is a big deal. I also like cantaloupes and honeydews. I love those in the summer, too. And they're similar. Not as They don't have the lycopene that watermelon does because they don't have that red color. Um, but it, it's a powerful fruit for summertime. And it's, it's cool that these things become available to us when we need them the most. And I love to make these probiotic foods that enhance the vitamins in the foods um, and allows for superior digestion. And I love teaching people how to make them. And they just, they make you feel good. And I have lots of recipes with apples and berries and watermelons that I'm going to put in this article. So you can go to this article and you can click on the link in the description and you'll see all the recipes I have. I even have extra recipes for my Botic Pro members this summer. We just put out a summer ebook for members, which has a bunch of probiotic foods in it. We've got another one coming um, in a few weeks that are probiotic drinks. And I'm actually making a, a new drink right now. That's, oh gosh, it's so good. We've got like a watermelon kombucha, kefir soda slushy. I've got a blueberry, um, one that's coming, you can make with fresh or frozen blueberries, a kefir soda. Um, I've got a whole bunch of new things um, that are coming out um, that are going to be really fun. And we also have a probiotic dessert coming out this summer. And that'll be probably the end of July or 1st of August. So we've got lots of summer ebooks for people who are Botic Pro members, which is um, something you can you can get a lot of every month. We put out recipes. We have a Q&A once a month. So Everybody gets on and gets to ask me all their questions. Um, it's really, really fun for me. Um, we have courses and we do all kinds of things on our membership site. And I'll put that in the description below too. So anyway, stay healthy, happy, and hydrated this summer. Eat lots of fruits and vegetables, some probiotic foods, and really enjoy the summer. Thanks for listening, guys. And we'll talk to you next week.